Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we're working on the Ram 1500. This is the 2012 model, has the 5.7 liter Hemi in it. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is changing fluids in the front differential, transfer case, and rear differential. It's been about uh, 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers and I've never done this job, so it's probably time to swap out fluids. For my purposes, this truck is really light duty. I use it for hauling my uh, kayaks around and my quads, so I wouldn't classify any of the work that it does in the severe category, but probably always a good idea to keep those fluids changed. So, let's get at it. Okay, let's start out with the rear differential. On mine, um, this is uh, a limited slip uh, differential. I know that because I uh, have my uh, build sheet. So this one's a little bit different from what I've seen on others. A lot of them will have a um, access point or a service point on the very back of the differential. Mine only has the drain plug down here and the fill plug up there. So what I'm going to do first off is just loosen them off, make sure I can get them out. And this is a number 14 hex nut bit. Start on the lower one here. Make sure it's all the way in. It's always good to grunt. I gave it the old Selena Williams. Now these shouldn't be too tight. Let's got that one started. Let's try the fill port. That wasn't so bad either. We'll take that one all the way out. So when you're draining it from down here, it's good to have some air able to get in from above. Just in case there's some oil there, I have my drip pan in place. So it was fairly full. The oil is a syrup colored, so I'm not sure if that's normal or not. What the heck? So I'm just going to take this drain plug out. Now let's start on the next one, the lower one for really draining out the uh, differential. I did notice when I pull out the plug there's a little bit of red material on there which I believe is like a, um, an RTV sealant which I'm going to put on the plug when I put it back in. Okay, we'll just let that drain out. Hope the noise in the background isn't annoying. My neighbor is doing some hammer drilling so we both decided to do things at the exact same time. Okay, well, while that's draining I'm going to clean up my drain plugs here. Now the truck I have just sitting on the garage floor, um, I think you could have it probably up on stands, but I find it's probably best to keep it as even as you can. I'm not sure if these plugs are magnetic at all, but I didn't see any uh, metal material on them, which is a good sign. Okay, it's almost done draining out. There's a bit of black silt in the bottom of the differential, so I'll just drag as much of that out I can with my finger. Doesn't feel like there's any metal material, so I'm happy with that. Okay, the fluid I'm using is the uh, Penn's Oil Platinum Axle Oil 75W140, uh, and which is the recommended viscosity for this vehicle. And plus the fact that it's full synthetic as well. It does say a limited slip on it, so it is good for limited slip differentials, um, but Chrysler does recommend having this additive in it, which is the Mopar limited slip additive, so I'm going to mix that in. Uh, it does say on the instructions for the Penn's oil that you can 
mix other additives in with it that it's uh, accepting of that and may as well stick with the Mopar recommended additive just in case. Now you may be wondering, well, how do I know if I have a limited slip differential? Uh, in my case, I have the build sheet because I bought the truck from new. Uh, there are web pages you can go to that will, you can put in your VIN number and it will tell you uh, all the options in your vehicle and I'll leave a link down below for one that worked for me. Uh, another thing you can do is go into the country and do a smoky burnout and see if uh, you leave uh, a single wheel peel or if you got two tires that are leaving tracks. If you got two tires leaving tracks it's a good sign you have a limited slip differential unless it's not working anymore and then you've got a different problem than changing the fluid. Okay it's still dripping a little bit but I think we've got the worst of it out of there. So for that lower plug, I'm just going to put a little bead of this thread sealant on it. You don't need a lot. To be quite honest with you, I've never sealed a differential plug before. I've never had to. So I'm not sure if these, uh, with synthetic oils, if it weeps more or what. People were using it and recommended using it, so I'm just following suit here. Kind of got everywhere. People have said that Teflon tape works just as well. Um, but uh, this thread sealer should do the trick too. Now I'm sure there's a torque specification for these plugs, but uh, you just don't need to over crank them down, that's for sure. I knew uh, I had to really give it an oof to get it undone, so I'll just for some reason my camera quit there, but we got this tightened up just about. Give it an oof at the end there, and that should be tight enough. Let's clean up the plug area here. That's a bit of a difficult angle to uh, get our oil into. Okay, I'm going to try this thing with the plastic hose on it. And I'm going to fill in a, a bottle of the uh, differential oil, and then I'm going to add in the uh, limited slip with that too, so that it's mixed together. This also has a spring-loaded twisty in there so that you can stop it from flowing um, when you add your fluid to it. I'm going to stop there. Back down. Then I'll add the uh, differential additive in there. Limited slip additive, that is. That way it's kind of already pre-mixed. I don't know if it really makes a difference. Some differential fluids have a squeeze bag that makes it a lot easier. You can just kind of squeeze it into the fill hole. Uh, so let me know what kind of oil you would prefer to use. This uh, lid is not very well sealed either, so this should be interesting. Not sure this is the easiest method. Okay, let's put that in there and open up the valve and hopefully it will come down. Oop. We got fluid. Now the color of the oil going in seems to be pretty much the same color as what came out so not a lot of uh, breakdown of the fluid that's for sure I don't think this is the easiest method but once you get it in a position it does flow out pretty good okay I didn't like that method because it was taking too long so I got myself a, basically a siphon pump the hose will go into the differential and the other end will go in that bottle of uh, gear oil. So let's give this a try. This doesn't appear to be the easiest method either. But 
especially when you're lying on your back. We should almost be at the full mark as soon as it starts dripping out of the uh, fill hole. And that looks like it right there. Excellent. We'll just let that weep out. Now we'll put a bit of uh, thread seal on that plug and we'll seal her back up again this stuff's supposed to be resistant to gear oils and lubricants and stuff so i hope it's doing the job don't want to see any weeping after all of this bit of an oof towards the end oof and that should be tight enough we'll wipe off the thread seal excess oil here just gonna take some brake clean and clean off some of that oil there okay on to part two of our little drivetrain uh, fluid change we did the rear differential and now I've got the truck turned around and as you can see I have it up on ramps and I've jacked up the back end and put it on stands. The reason I did that was I want to try and keep the truck as level as I can so that when I'm draining and adding fluid we get the right amounts in without it draining off the drain plug at the top or the fill plug at the top when it's not really full yet. And the fact that I can't get my big gut underneath the truck unless it's lifted up uh, is another reason why I have it raised up. Probably the main reason. So my truck has the uh, differential skid plate installed. I'm not sure if that's a standard feature or if it's optional, but uh, there are four half inch uh, bolts we got to take out to get that skid plate out of the way. I've never had these off, so hopefully they come out easy. I don't know why I'm using an extended socket here, but that's what I got. One of these days I'm going to get a nice battery operated ratchet. fairly heavy piece of steel. don't know if I mentioned it, but and it might be obvious, but this differential faces where the drain plug and the fill plug art faces the front of the truck. So I have my number 8 hex socket and we'll take the uh, fill plug out first. That one was not tight at all. That one was almost just beyond hand tight. So we'll see how full it is if it drains out of the top hole a little bit. It does not. There's the drain plug there. If I could drop it three more times, that would be a, a good thing, right? Set that aside. Let's open up the bottom one.
kind of an amber color not too bad I don't know if these are magnetic or not but I don't see any metal on them there is a little bit of black material but this is the first time I've ever done this job and the first time I've ever done it on this truck okay we're down to the last drops on this so I think I'm gonna call that close enough can't really get my finger in there too far to see how much debris there might be in there I don't feel any metal particles or anything so that's a good sign on the rear differential I put that uh, seam sealer on I'm gonna leave that out this time there didn't appear to be any on this plug from the factory so I'm not going to uh, put any in on this part of it and we'll see what happens if it starts to weep or not my guess is it will not we'll just give it a bit of a tight it was not very tight when I took it off so we'll just give it the right there and that's tight enough now we'll get our uh, castrol fluid in there okay the type of uh, front axle fluid I bought is castrol limited slip uh, 80 weight 90 or 80 w 90 and it has the gl5 uh, designation on it which is the required uh, type of fluid for the front differential and the the original fluid is uh, 75 w 90 and i don't think that little bit of uh, viscosity difference is going to make uh, much of an impact it'll just be slightly less fluid at a colder temperature but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about affecting warranty or um, damaging the differential at all. It's just the main thing is it meets the API GL5 specification. So it's tight quarters in here, so I'm going to try using a plastic hose that I've run through across the cross member here. And then I can maybe pour the bottle in there and we'll see how well that works. I have the siphon pump, but I had trouble using that when I was doing the rear differential. So let's see how this works out. Ah, oh, you dummy. Don't cut that off too much like I did. Now I gotta get a lid from the other bottle and cut less off. This one I just nipped the top off of. Okay. Let's see if my big plan works out here. The key is to get some air in it too so that it'll flow. And get the bottle high enough to get some gravity going. And squeeze the bottle. I certainly see the advantage of those um, soft-sided packages that you can just squeeze the the oil in I've seen other videos of this and boy do they make it look easy okay that squeeze in the bottle method just was not working for me um, so I'm going to try the siphon pump again and I think I was using it wrong the last time you I think you suck the fluid in to the uh, container here or from the container into this uh, part of the pump and then you just push it out uh, using the handle here so my only concern is is it going to come dumping out the bottom so I need to be prepared for that yeah I was saying how other youtubers and stuff make these jobs look so easy but I don't know if they are that easy so we're going to suck the fluid out Got to be patient, let it draw up. This will hold about, it's got a measure on it somewhere. I think it'll hold about a liter or a quart. How much did I get in there? Oh, it doesn't have a, oh yeah, it does have a measure on it. I've got about 400 milliliters, so about half this bottle is in here. Okay, let's try getting a half a liter in there 
using the siphon pump. It is working quite a bit faster than trying to squeeze the bottle. Well, that's mucho better. Yeah, it's already dripping out the fill hole. So that was about a liter and a half, which does not seem like enough. Because when I, as you remember, when I took out the fill plug, uh, nothing came dripping out of it. Again, I'm going to put the plug in without using any uh, thread sealer. And the plug was not that tight. Same with the uh, drain plug. Get that out of the way. Just a oof right there and that should be good. I'm going to spray it with some brake clean so that we'll have a good indication of it, whether it's leaking or not. Later on when I check it again. Try not to get my camera all mucky. And it's always a good idea to look around for any fluid leaks while you're doing this. This is the actuator here, the electronic actuator that engages the front differential. With the dial on the dash, I have the what is it? I got five, four high, four low, and auto, where auto distributes the power between the front and the back wheels as required. And so far, there has been no leaks out of the seals or anything, so I think we're good to put the skid plate back on. I ended up buying three bottles of the differential fluid, and in actuality, I only used one and a half, approximately. Uh, each bottle is 946 milliliters, doesn't say what that is in pints or quarts. Um, and um, with spillage, I probably put in 800 milliliters of the first bottle and then 400 milliliters of the second bottle. So 1.2 um, liters of fluid and I'll put the uh, conversion on the screen what that is in pints. And like I showed, it was already dripping out of the fill hole, so that gives me a good indication that it's full, unless there's areas that the fluid needs to go. Okay, now it's time for the uh, transfer case. This is a Borg Warner transfer case I'm going to be changing the fluid on. So um, I went and bought the specific fluid for that. Uh, the manual actually in the truck says uh, ATF4 but um, I'm going to make sure I'm using the correct fluid in the transfer case because it's, I think it's a little bit more specific. Okay, protecting the transfer case, we have another skid plate here. Again, I'm not sure if it's optional. Not all trucks may have the skid plate, but also this is a half-inch socket again. Luckily, these aren't seized on. Uh, a little bit rusty, but not too bad. Now, I see the fill plug and the drain plug are just, um, it looks like a 3 8 inch socket, or sorry, ratchet. Just like that. Just going to loosen off the drain plug a bit first. 
again it wasn't overly tight and the fill plug didn't have too many pounds of uh, torque on it for sure right into the tray again not sure how far this is going to fly out of here For ATF, it's pretty dark. It smells okay, though. Okay, I'm just gonna go wipe off my drain plugs and I'll be back. Oh, that looks pretty much drained out. Let's see if we can feel any. No metal particulate, which is a good sign. I don't use this truck in any, you know, severe service mode, so um, it's unlikely that there's probably hardly any wear in here. Of course, it does spin constantly all the way through on one side until it's engaged up here. So I did notice that there was a thread sealer on the plugs. So I'm gonna put some back on again. I did clean off the old stuff on the wire wheel on my grinder, better known as the Cheek Poker 4000. Don't need too much. And it should be resistant to hydraulic fluids. Okay, we're going to close up the drain part here because it is pretty much all drained out. Again, you don't need to over tighten it, just give it a bit of, a bit of an oof -da. And there it is. Clean off that thread sealer. Again, never use thread sealer. I, I probably said this about five times in this bit, video, but I've seen other people do it, so why not? Now, we're going to fill it up. It's going to take about... What did they say? 1.3 liters? Okay, for this fluid I went right to the dealer to get it. And trust me, they do not give this stuff away, and I'm not sure you really need to go to this extent, but there seemed to be controversy on what fluid to use. So, this is the actual transfer case lubricant. Now, up to 2016, so like 2008 to 2016, you would use this fluid, or say 2015, and it says right on the label, pre-2016. After that, it's a different type of uh, fluid. So make sure you're getting the right fluid for your application. And mine is a 44-44 is the uh, part number. And like I said, it's over the counter at the parts department. And each bottle was like, what was it, $52 Canadian? So you don't want to waste it. Now it looks like there's enough room where I can actually pour the bottle in without any hoses or anything. So I'm just going to snip the top off. I already took the inner seal off. And let's see what we can do here. Move my tray over because it appears to be one of be drippage. Let's hold on a second here. Helps if you tighten the lid too. This stuff is like liquid gold, you don't want to waste it. Pardon me. And it does just look like transmission fluid for sure. This stuff's a little bit redder than the stuff I took out. I think the change interval is recommended at 60,000 miles and I'm at about 70,000 miles so I'm not too far off however the fluid has been in there for 10 years because I don't drive it a lot it's mainly our holiday highway vehicle and I use it to 
tow my quad and take the kayaks out and stuff. I would say we are there as it's running out the fill. Well, let's let it drip down a bit. And my expensive fluid, some of which I spilled on the floor. Now, no fluid dripped out when I took the uh, plug out, the fill plug, so we'll let that drip down a bit. Just to make sure it's not overfilled, but generally, if it comes to the top of the uh, uh, fill plug and drips out a bit, that's when you know you're full. And according to the guide on the bottle, I did put in about 300 milliliters of the second bottle, and the other bottle was about 950 milliliters, so we're about right there with the correct amount of fluid. I probably would have used my siphon pump to fill it up, but I haven't cleaned it out from doing the uh, front differential and I did not want to get gear oil in the transfer case. I wanted to make sure that, that the siphon pump was perfectly clean. So that's why I went about it the hard way, pouring it in just using the bottle. While that's dripping down, I'm just going to put some thread sealer on my plug. I'm going to say that's close enough for dripping off. I made a mess of my thread sealer here. Again, not too tight. Let's wipe off the excess thread sealer. A little brake clean to clean up the mess. There we go. Better than new because it's been worked on. I'm going to put this heavy ass uh, shield back up. Or I swear a lot of these channels make this stuff look easy, but when you're uh, mid 50s rolling around with your big belly on the ground, some of these things just aren't that easy. Okay, let's just go for a quick zip. And uh, we can do some leak checking after. And I'll engage a four-wheel drive and everything, make sure it's still working. Be uh, Make me sad if I cause more problems that didn't exist before. Okay, let's switch it into four-wheel drive lock so that we're actually in four-wheel drive high, basically. And it says we're in four-wheel drive, so let's get those transfer case and uh, differentials doing their thing. Okay, let's put it in four-wheel drive low. And it's flashing. I think I have to put it in neutral first. There. Okay, four-wheel drive low. Let's hear how it sounds. And I see the um, traction control turns off when you're in four low, so it turns off automatically. It's working fine. I know four-wheel drive generally it's not uh, best for turning. The RPM sure get up when you're uh, in four-wheel drive. I don't have a lot of experience with four-wheel drive, but all the whirring sounds sound pretty normal to me. There's no clunking so it sounds or grinding gears, so... But this is just a good workout for the uh, differential and mainly the transfer case on in this uh, scenario. Okay, why don't we go find some gravel and test the rear differential, make sure the uh, limited slip is still working. 
Okay, we're on a gravel road here. I'm just gonna give her the beans and, and see if the rear differential still has a working limited slip. It should, I don't recall it not ever not working. Let's give her a rip here. I'm just gonna hit the gas. That wasn't a very good, so I'm gonna do a bit of a brake stand here. Let's see. Yep, I could feel both wheels turning. Let's just look at the tracks. And you can see double tracks there. So the limited slip is still functioning just fine. Okay, I think that's it on this video. Uh, I'm gonna break it up into three chapters where we change the uh, rear differential fluid, front differential fluid, and the transfer case fluid. And I tested to make sure that um, four-wheel drive is still functioning in high and low and in auto. Um, I don't hear any weird sounds that are audible in the cab of the truck anyways. And uh, gave her the beans and tested the uh, limited slip rear end and it still seems to be spinning on two wheels. No one wheel peel for this guy. So if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, all those good things. And uh, yeah, if, you, there's, if there's easier ways that you could uh, recommend on how I did this job, because for a bloated uh, old guy like me, it was not the easiest job. It wasn't the hardest job either, but uh, maybe my methods are you know, what's the problem. So feel free to comment on how I can do things better. So that's it for this edition of Monday Man. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.